welcome to the Future of Field Service podcast. I'm your host, Sarah Nicastro. Today, we're going to be talking about all things digital data and analytics. I'm excited to be joined today by Dr. Haroon Abu, who is the Vice President of Digital Data and Analytics at Bell & Howell, uh, as well as co-author of the 2021 book, Trust, The Winning Formula for Digital Leaders, A Practical Guide for Digital Transformation. Haroon, welcome to the Future of Field Service podcast. Thank you, and great to be here, Sarah. Yes, I'm excited to have you. All right, so before we dig into um, some of the points we want to be sure to cover today, tell our listeners just a little bit more about yourself, your background, your role at Bell & Howell, that sort of thing. Glad to. My name is Haroon Abu. I'm the Vice President of Digital Data and Analytics at Bell & Howell, which is headquartered in uh, Research Triangle Park in North Carolina. I've been with Bell & Howell for the last 12 years. If you don't know, Bell & Howell is a technology-enabled services company with over 850 service engineers. Bell & Howell services um, industrial equipment from mail automation to robotics with a large install base in North America spanning multiple OEMs. The company also delivers comprehensive solution for uh, retail click and collect grocery, pharmacy, automation and production mail industries. Currently, I'm focusing on transforming the company through analytics and digital technologies, such as IoT, machine learning, artificial intelligence, and field service automation. My team is building uh, digital, digital service offerings, such as remote monitoring, by connecting both legacy and newer equipment through log files, sensors, et cetera, and processing them in real time in order to provide prescriptive insights and recommendation to our field service technicians. Okay, excellent. So can you talk to me a little bit, Haroon, about you know, what drew you to the field of digital transformation? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, my undergraduate degree is in, in, is in uh, industrial engineering. I was always fascinated with operational improvements and efficiency gains, which, my, which drew my choice of major. Then I did my MBA and uh, MS in engineering management with the intention of working in a managerial role in manufacturing. Right after my graduation uh, at that time, I worked in a company that was transitioning from print production to audio cassette manufacturing, and then to the manufacturing of compact discs and DVDs. So in that company, I saw firsthand how a, how a company can be disrupted by rapid changes in technology and can eventually go under if it cannot keep up with the speed of innovation. When I started at Bell & Howell, I quickly witnessed the same challenge, which is transitioning from a legacy mail uh, equipment manufacturing company into state-of-the-art technology-enabled services company, as well as a solution provider for cutting-edge technology, cutting technologies in click-and-collect business. Um, while working at Bell & Howell, I also pursued my PhD on digital transformation, where I studied how physical companies digitally transform themselves. I strongly believe that uh, digital transformation, when done right, can add tremendous value to an organization in a number of ways. Yeah. No, it's a really exciting field. Um, I actually recently wrote an article I've had a few people in, in, you know, the last couple of months uh, ask me, you know, do you think we should still be using the term digital transformation, right? And, and mm -hmm. so I sort of reflected on that in the article um, because I, I do get where they're coming from, you know, and there's a couple different points that have been made. You know, one is, you know, some people, um, perceived that they have already transformed in, in the instance of kind of the initial, you know, migration to a digital ecosystem, right. um, you know, and then, you know, is transformation the appropriate word if we're really talking about something that's more of an ongoing, you know, continual effort? What are your thoughts on that? Definitely. I mean, it's not digital transformation because it's table stakes. All companies mm -hmm. need to go through digital transformation. We nowadays refer to it as just digital. It's companies, how companies can innovate their business models using digital technologies. Mm -hmm. Because digital actually magnifies the traditional metrics. 
in the in the olden days, if you're getting you know one x return on something, once you have the backbone under uh, digital systems, then the impact is multifold because the investment mm-hmm. is already made. Then it's basically scaling up from there. Mm-hmm. So it's basically um, how companies can use digital in their strategy. Right. There is no business strategy and digital strategy because digital is the strategy. Right. Because if you don't have digital, then it's very difficult to uh, manage your business going forward. Yeah. So what I kind of said was, you know, you could call it the digital journey. You could call it, you know, the digital. Um, what was the other the other term I used? You know, something like that. The problem is, yeah. people hate all of those words. <laughs> Do you know what yeah. I mean? Like, so, there's always someone that says, "Oh, I'm sick of journey," or "I'm sick of transformation," right. or you know, right. whatever. And at the end yeah. of the day, you know, um, it really isn't so much what we call it, but yep. a common understanding within the business that digital is an imperative part of the business and the yep. strategy, right? Yep. Um, and I kind of laid it out into a continuum just based on the stories that I've heard and helped tell over a number of years of sort of how companies tend to progress, you know, through that. So yeah. I think, you know, honestly, the the definition and, and that common understanding can be a challenge in and of itself for businesses. Um, what are some of the other ways you see companies struggling to really succeed with digital? Yeah. So digital, uh, the classic definition that I use is it's the process of using digital technologies to create or modify business processes, culture, and customer experiences to meet the changing business and market requirements, right? So it's basically a fundamental change in the organization's mindset, systems, data, and tools, all that need to be together needed to reposition the entire company and company's business model. So we, when I say we, I I basically, uh, it's the research teams that I work with at uh, innovation departments of um, two prestigious universities. One is uh, Business Analytics Initiative of North Carolina State University, which is headquartered here, which is located here in Raleigh and um, innovation department at uh, RWTH Aachen University in Germany. So we first studied the phenomenon of um, digital transformation through an extensive survey that we designed called Patterns of Digitization Survey. So this survey examined every aspect of digital and how it is implemented. We looked at over 500 companies, their business strategies, how they allocate resources, their design practices, et cetera. In addition to that technology angle, We also analyze the people side of things, what we call soft skills, Mm -hmm. like how the leaders communicate, how they build trust in their teams, et cetera. And what we realized or what we um, saw was that companies fall into two distinct groups. Uh, One is digitally developing companies. The other one is digitally mature. Far majority of those 500 companies were digitally developing versus digitally mature companies. The companies that focus mainly on technology rather than cultural and mindset aspects of digital are really struggling to implement it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, uh, absolutely. And there's, you know, there's so many layers to this where, you know, you realize that, um, you know, it's also about incorporating new skill sets, right? So yep, the yep. role that you've taken on in, in Bell and Howell is a really good example of, um, you know, dedicating more resource, energy, and effort to this practice, right? And, um, you know, sometimes I think companies struggle to sort of, you know, figure out how they need to digitally advance without recognizing some of the new and different skill sets that are necessary within the organization to really go as far as they need to. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. While also to your point, making sure that the incumbent people, you know, are understanding the evolution and bought into uh, you know, where the company is going and the introduction of different tools or different, 
you know, ways of measurement or different practices of, of making business decisions, you know, all of the things that come from not just the introduction of the digital tools, but as yeah. reflected in your, your title, you know, the result of that is the, the data you didn't have access before, uh, access to before and, and the way that you can analyze the business in, you know, um, ways that you couldn't do prior. Right. So there's, yep. You know, the idea of digital tools is is really the beginning of of this journey, not, you know, not the finish line, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. So um if you if you look at at a company that you consider digitally mature, you know, yep. who has done a, a really good job at this mm -hmm. versus, you know, someone earlier on in the process, you know, maybe a, a bit of a laggard, um, you know, or, or someone that still has quite a bit of work to do um, mm -hmm. to digitally transform. What would you say would be the key differences, you know, that would sort of surface between those, those businesses? Yeah, so we statistically validated these results. So the major driver for the differences between digitally mature and digitally developing companies is the differences in human dimensions of digital leaders, right? Okay. Digital mature organizations are managed differently. Their leaders align the human and financial resources with a strategy. They create an innovative culture, even within a legacy environment like Bell & Howell, you create a collaborative environment, innovative environment, kind of entrepreneurial culture, promote open and transparent communication. That enduring human traits of these leaders far outweigh the proficiency in the technology, evolving field of information technology. Yeah, the, mm -hmm. the knowledge of the technology is important, but it's also how you exhibit, how you promote, the, um, promote uh, that culture how do you make mm -hmm. digital part of your strategic priorities? It's um, you know uh, the ability to engender trust of their employees. Uh, it's more about people than it's about digital technology. Right. So it, it actually requires um, organizational changes to the customer centric um, that's backed by backed by leaders. Mm -hmm. um, so that's pretty much what we found is that the leaders. Um, they trust their teams, they put leadership in place, they hire the right skill sets, they build credibility, they tell stories of when they're successful or their failure so that employees are, are properly aligned to the theme of uh, digital. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, would you say that there are some, I guess, common trends in terms of you know, as a company moves from digitally developing to digitally mature, um, if you look at the people part, right? So, mm -hmm. so I understand what you're saying, the impact of leadership and how leadership, you know, views this transformation and understands its role in sort of, you know, acting as a motivator and acting as a connector, but not needing to act as a doer of all things, right? And, and really right. trusting the team. Um, yeah. Would you say there's, you know, any commonalities though in the new skills or new roles that you see companies bringing in to help support and build this out? Yeah. So, so that, so the key thing is when you hire new people, trying to uh, have them understand the value about the data. So mm -hmm. it's basically, you know, starting starting out with uh, what is that you're trying to do with the digital. Mm -hmm. It's not a buzzword anymore. So what is mm -hmm. your business goal? What is that your company trying to do with digital transformation or digital tools? For example, take Bell & Howell. We were transforming a company from a manufacturing-based, male production-based company that was in rapid decline 10 years ago, uh, five years ago, and create new business models. We were transforming mm -hmm. ourselves into a, a technology-enabled, people-powered service organization. And in order to do that, uh, in order to service other OEMs in the robotic space and in other adjacent markets that we never handled before, we needed new business models, including mm -hmm. remote monitoring. And you know, we were able to connect because our existing break-fix model no longer works when we are servicing 
um, retail, you know, one of the largest retailer with, you know, 5,000 stores. Mm -hmm. We had to do more with remote monitoring. So how do we do remote monitoring? We had to obviously put the digital backbone with IoT machine learning algorithms where analytics data is the underpinning. Mm -hmm. So we had to do that. And now, you know, at this point, we are remotely monitoring 98% of our service calls on, on this new click and collect, you know, the retail focus product. And in order to do that, we need to win over our technician. We need to start small and show them that, hey, there is value here. Mm -hmm. To be able to resolve an issue in 10 minutes um, and the remote monitoring platform, the digital backbone we put together is going to tell you what the issue is. Mm -hmm. And then there is that contextual information. So you're able to fix a problem in 10 minutes rather than having to roll the trucks and um, resolve and take it for you know three hours or four hours. We just cannot scale that model, right? right. So they see that as, as success. So when they see that, okay, yeah, now I see the value of data. These guys are really modeling it, algorithm using algorithms to, to kind of minimize the attention needed to these machines. So when mm -hmm. those machines are calling home, meaning our home office, creating a service call, alerting them, and then if they cannot fix it, you know, in the same field service management system, dispatching a technician based on geolocation, based on skill sets, mm -hmm. et cetera, that's really a win. So they see that. And when they see that as successful, then the culture, you know, kind of slowly starts to change. Sure. Saying that, okay, there is innovation happening there is value in data that I see, and then they are on your side, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, technology played a key role, but do they need to know how we solve this using algorithms, machine learning, artificial intelligence? No, they don't need to know that. No, well, right. Yeah, they don't need to know the technology details, but just focusing on technology details is not going to win them over. Mm -hmm. So right from the top management, we need to make this strategically intentional mm -hmm. analytics and digital is strategically intentional. It's not because everybody else is doing. No, right. it's part of our strategy. We need to make sure this happens. And then we talk about it. We talk more about it. We share the success stories. Mm -hmm. And then the whole organization um, becomes part of it. You know, we are not yeah. there quite yet, but I think we are making progress. Mm -hmm. um, same thing we implemented KPIs, you know, field service, uh, Performance metrics, this is how mm -hmm. we measure our success. This is how our OEMs measure our success. Mm -hmm. That's defined throughout the company and we measure it in real time using the digital platform that we put together. Mm -hmm. um, so we see how those, how those then cause improvements in our operational efficiencies, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, it, it takes, it's a journey, as you said, it takes time, mm -hmm. but digital for me, is a lot more than technology. Technology is important. You need the right, right people to get who understand the technology. Right. But it's bringing that, bringing people on board. Mm -hmm. um, it's changing their mindset. Mm -hmm. Is very critical for our success. I think it's also. I mean, I, I agree hundred percent. But I also think there's this um, kind of stumbling block in. So I mentioned like that continuum, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And there seems to be this stumbling block where, like you said, I mean, digital today is table stakes, right? So we're yeah. not talking about should we and all of that stuff, right? It's, it's, right. it's a given. Right. But I think you have some leaders who understand its importance and, mm -hmm. and advocate for it, but where they get stuck is sort of um, all of a sudden they have this wealth of data uh, that they don't know what to do with. Right. So then it, it becomes, you know, they've they've gotten, you know, a certain ways to the the end game. Right. Which is really being able to, you know, not have digital tools for the sake of digital tools, but have digital tools for the sake of, you know, extracting the relevant insights and stories from mm -hmm. the data to make better decisions or to you know, um, solve more issues remotely or to create a new customer value proposition, right? Yeah. 
Yep. And so from the, the analytics and the storytelling perspective, you know, um, what is, what is the best advice you have there for, you know, making sure that you are, you know, not just going down this path because you know you need to, but going down this path with the right outcomes in mind. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you it's starting with the right outcome. Mm -hmm. um, what is the business objective, right? Mm -hmm. What is the business objective? What are the business questions you're trying to answer with data? And what digital tools do you need to do that? For mm -hmm. example, you know, in, in Bell and Howell case, if our goal is to... Um, provide or invent or innovate new business models to grow our service business because we're mm -hmm. no longer servicing our own equipment. We're servicing, you know, 50 plus other OEM equipment. So we needed a new business model, which is remote mm -hmm. monitoring, remote collaboration tools, um, et cetera. So that, that's our business model. We needed to innovate the business model from mm -hmm. traditional break fix to more on the, you know, predictive prescriptive side. Mm -hmm. Right. So that was, that was our business model innovation. So in order to do that, what did we need? We needed a digital backboard, right? Which takes these machine log information in real time from these machines. And then we put together IoT based platform that builds a model on, okay, if this and this, um, you know, the error logs happen, this is your likely action. Basically, you know, intelligent based algorithms and then connect that to our field service management system. Mm -hmm. So that service call gets created and then it's visualized. Um, service call can be closed. It gets visualized using Tableau platform, um, et cetera, et cetera. So that was our business need. And that's how we solved using digital tools. Mm -hmm. The second thing is we needed to improve our operational efficiency, which is one of the main starting block in, in any continuum, for example, that you're talking mm -hmm. about, mm -hmm. focus on your operational efficiencies. In order to do that, we need to come up with some KPIs. We, we mm -hmm. are a field service organization, but we did not really have a commonly communicated, commonly defined performance metrics. Mm -hmm. And so we defined that based on some of the best practices. And then we developed a method to measure those metrics in real time for each mm -hmm. OEM and also for every technician. You know, what's this tech utilization? How, what is this first time fix rate? Um, what is, uh, you know, what is this call close rate, all that kind of stuff. So mm -hmm. we can provide a scorecard with the idea that if we improve that, we'll obviously achieve some operational efficiencies. And then we will also be able to <clears throat> present that to our OEMs so they can also, you know, see how we are improving towards yeah. the goal. Yeah. So, yeah. So all in all, it comes down to what's your main objective, mm -hmm. which is tied to a strategy. You have right. to tie that to the strategy and then go get the data. You may not have all the data mm -hmm. or whatever data we think we have been collecting may be useless, mm -hmm. right? So define the problem and then see if you have data. If you don't have data, put systems in place where we can collect the data mm -hmm. and then improve, um, you know, the refine the data. So that will ultimately lead us to operational improvement or in, in the case of remote monitoring, et cetera, new business models, mm -hmm. um, you know, that, that should be, you know, some of the analytics driven path towards digital, but uh, analytics driven path for improvement or mm -hmm. new business models using digital technologies and tools. Okay. All right. So speaking of data, um, in the book, you know, you, you did this research and so you have this uh, analysis of, um, of digital based on the statistics that you found, yep. but you also incorporated uh, interviews. Um, so tell me a little bit uh, about the importance um, and the value you found in talking directly with other digital leaders to, you know, put the um, content for the book together. Yeah. So as you said, you know, we, we, we had uh, compelling statistics based on the studies that we have done, but we wanted to go and talk to successful digital leaders. Mm -hmm. uh, so we interviewed um, 15 digital leaders uh, in the US as well as in Germany. We know they're successful based on their track record. These are, you know, proven companies with proven uh, successes in digital transformation. Um, 
So th they included, you know, CEOs and uh, chief data officers, business unit leaders from automobile automobiles, medical equipment, IT services, and a lot of, you know, different fields. So, um, so these interviews showed us that the strength of their leadership based on what they told us comes as much from their personal character as it does from their competencies to deploy digital technologies. So most of these leaders actually model human dimensions to build trust in their organization, mm -hmm. right? Most of the chief, most of the chief data officers, what we have found is the average tenure is two to three years. So they need to make sure, and CDO roles are pretty much recent. So they are basically have to work together with a lot of other C's, a lot of other business mm -hmm. unit leaders. Mm -hmm. so we call them their boundary spanners, boundary spanning capabilities. So they need to be mm -hmm. able to work with multiple departments and multiple people. So uh, they need to have growth mindset. Uh, they need to have storytelling capabilities, et cetera. And after talking to these 15 digital leaders, we methodically using content analysis actually developed a scale to measure um, human dimensions of digital leaders. Mm -hmm. So there are 15 uh, human dimensions um, that came out of these uh, studies as well as uh, interviews. And actually there is a self-assessment tool on our website, uh, patternsofdigitization.com uh, where you know, digital leaders can actually go and take that survey and it actually shows them how they are doing on various uh, dimensions like storytelling mm -hmm. or, mm -hmm. or ethical use of AI or growth mindset or um, humility, integrity, et cetera. Uh, it, it, it shows them where they are lacking so that they can, they can measure themselves and they can have their team measure, measure them. Um, so that's you know, part of our research, continuing research. Uh, there are also, we are also in the process of developing some tools that will help them improve their um, skills that are in deficit. I mean, mm -hmm. sometimes these are these seem to be trivial, but they're not really trivial. Um, it matters a lot when you are implementing a major company-wide initiative. Mm -hmm. How do you really make sure that that's successful? And as yeah. you know, most of the times, technology, yeah, implementation of technology is one thing. Right. Even field service management system, for example, but it's after that, what happens? How is it internalized mm -hmm. by the by the people, by the employees in the organization? Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Um, what would you say, Haroon, has been the hardest? I mean, personally, you know, Larry Blue, uh, the CEO of, of Bell & Howell has been on the podcast before as well. And I think I think the company has a really cool story of, of how you you know, really reshape the identity of the business. You know, I mean, it, it is a, it is a really compelling story. Um, that being said, I am sure it wasn't easy. Um, so, you know, looking back on that journey, what would you say was the hardest part of digitally transforming, you know, the legacy Bell and Howe business? Yeah. You know, again, I've been here for 12 years. Um, the hardest part is getting people on board. Right. Mm -hmm. so that's the hardest part, because in a company that has a history dating back to, I guess, 1906, mm -hmm. you know, there have been several iterations. You know, there are a lot of employees here with long, long tenure. So they have seen everything. Right. Mm -hmm. The thing is, why is this different? It's same as anything else. So we have to show the value mm -hmm. in what we are doing. That's more important. Plus, you know, the support and direction from leaders like Larry Blue makes a big difference, right? Mm -hmm. So one of the things that we have learned is, as I said, you know, when we are successful in making a change to the business model, remote monitoring is a perfect example, people automatically buy in. So mm -hmm. next time they ask, okay, can we get this? So th that becomes part of the culture. The other thing is, um, uh, the other thing is, um, you know, when we work with multiple machines, even our engineering department, they would write a machine log, like a log file in for a machine. Before, until we started this initiative, they would just write it, thinking that, you know, nobody is going to look at it, mm -hmm. right? Now, 
they understand that analytics actually is taking that piece of um, error log that they're writing on the machine to drive remote monitoring, mm-hmm. to drive when to dispatch a technician. You know, after a couple of years now, engineers are fully on board with that. When mm-hmm. they design a new system, like the one we recently did, uh, it's a, you know, a grocery pickup machine. When they did it, it's completely designed for serviceability mm-hmm. with, with um, machine logs, knowing that, you know, analysts, actually we worked very well together on that initiative so that we can, you know, they will write a machine, machine log, et cetera, and even um, machine log, et cetera, in, write it in a way that we can use it for predictive and prescriptive maintenance. Mm-hmm. So that, that took time, it didn't happen overnight. Right. So as people see how you're successful or how analytics, analytics can be used in multiple ways, to help the company, to help the service organization, to mm-hmm. eventually help technicians and employees, um, that, that will make it different. So yeah, we had some obstacles, but I think, I think we are at a point where we have slowly started to change the mindset mm-hmm. and, um, and we are seeing uh, some of their success. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's really cool. And I think, you know, in your role, and and you mentioned the role of the the chief data officer, you know, the idea of someone who's harmonizing things is very important, right? Because, you know, one of the biggest, you know, barriers to success we see with digital transformation is, is it companies attempting to do it in a very siloed way, right? Which is kind of the opposite of what needs to be done, right? And so, um, you know, I, I think that's an important uh, point as well is, you know, to really think about, you know, not just how imperative it is to overall strategy, but how important it is to have that consistency and that collaborative view yeah. on, you know, how, how it can happen. Yeah. Okay. Last question for today, Haroon. If you were to summarize, you know, some key takeaways for folks listening on, um, you, you know, this, this digital journey, what would, what would you, what would you leave folks with? Yeah, I would say that people are the key to digital transformation. Yes, bring in the right technologies. But, um, you know, if you, if you embrace cloud, you can actually scale up or scale down technology elasticity of um, the cloud gives you that opportunity to you know adopt these new technologies as you as you as business conditions change mm-hmm. um, and secondly start small and you know get some early success and always try to build trust in the organization mm-hmm. that way you know the the benefits of um, um, digital can be felt across the organization lastly, as far as the industry is concerned, I know your audience is field service organizations. Um, my take is that uh, the data landscape is probably not as mature as some other industries. So there is a lot more potential to innovate faster mm-hmm. beyond remote monitoring. There's a lot more opportunity to use AI and ML. Um, so for example, most of the few people who are in the field service organization, field service USA conference that mm-hmm. you and I attended, uh, we're mostly uh, the operation side. Um, mm-hmm. So I strongly believe that there should be more, you know, analytics representation. So analytics folks don't just work in isolation. They need to hear right. the real time problems. They need to hear mm-hmm. it from the people uh, who are running these service operations, right? Mm-hmm. So it's always a good idea to, uh, have that kind of balance so analytics can become, um, you know, uh, main ingredient of uh, success for uh, field service organizations. Mm-hmm. For sure. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, and and I agree. And and I appreciate you coming and, and sharing your insights. I think it's, you know, uh, it's it's a huge topic. There's probably a lot of different areas, you know, we could dig into in, in terms of, you um, you know, the, the storytelling and, and all of that stuff. But, you know, I, I like the point, um, that it's just as much about people as it is about technology. I think, uh, you know, it's, it's a really important point. So 
thank you for coming on and, and sharing. And Haroon, if, if folks want to check out the, the book, Trust, where can they find that? Uh, the website is uh, patternsofdigitization.com. Okay. Um, there's a link to the book from that website. Also, there is more research in that website and also self-assessment tool where you can measure the human dimensions of uh, digital leaders. Excellent. Okay. So patternsofdigitization.com is where you can find the book. Haroon, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Sarah, for doing this and uh, your thought leadership in this space. Thank you. Thank you. You can find more by visiting us at futureoffieldservice.com. You can also find us on LinkedIn as well as Twitter at the future of FS. The Future of Field Service podcast is published in partnership with IFS. You can learn more at ifs.com. As always, thank you for listening.